Hello, wonderful interpreters, and thank you again for tuning in. We have been very busy with our efforts, and that's why this video update was delayed, but finally, it is here. So thank you for your patience and understanding. Let's get into it. But before we get into the big scheduling system news, I want to share a quick election update with you. This is an email that we just received from Perk on Monday, March 29th. Please feel free to pause this video at any time to read all of the information here. Basically, Dario de la Rosa is saying here that there is only one more step to determine the right list of interpreters and make a decision. Perk wants all the parties involved to send our interpretation of what it means to be a language access provider according to the revised Code of Washington and how to label or tag those interpreters that appear to be both active and inactive on the list. All responses are due on April 7th. Now, that's cutting it very close to April 12th, which is the day that LNI's scheduling system will go live, according to them. All in the middle of our pending petition with PERC to represent language access providers or interpreters in the LNI system. This brings me to the big update about the scheduling system. Now, I want you to know that there is something that nobody is telling you and that we had noticed before, but we didn't think LNI would actually ignore it. And here it is. I want you to know that LNI cannot legally implement their scheduling system while there is a pending representation petition with PERC, the one that we filed for, what, you don't believe me? Well, you should know by now what I would want you to do in these situations. So please, go grab your popcorn and get comfy because it's movie night. What you see right here is a Washington Administrative Code regulation that imposes limitations on employer actions. Remember that for the purposes of a per collection, LNI is considered our employer. Now, we filed our representation petition with PERC on November 19th last year, and since then, our petition is still pending. So, let's read paragraph number two here to see what's really going on. It says, quote, changes to the status quo concerning wages, hours, or other terms and conditions of employees in the bargaining unit are prohibited during the period that a petition is pending before the commission, meaning PERC, under this chapter. Ha! Huh. So what's going on with this? To start with, the online scheduling system is a significant change to the status quo and it will change our working conditions since we won't be able to bill directly or accept appointments from agencies. Also, medical providers won't be able to request appointments from language agencies and will only be allowed to use independent interpreters on emergency situations. It's clear that this implementation will alter the way we secure work which will change our individual hours as providers and our earning amount of money will definitely change. This is once again a significant change in our wages and our working conditions, all while our representation petition is pending and as you just read with me here, it's prohibited. The evidence is clear, LNI is breaking the law with this implementation. There is no two ways about it. They can say that they were mandated by law since 2018, but the same law was amended by myself and other interpreters, if you remember, and it gave LNI three choices. One of those choices was a dual system or to maintain the status quo, but they decided for the scheduling system. But regardless, they have had nearly three years to implement this. They failed to implement it by September 1st, 2020, like the law required, making it meaningless anyway. And on December last year, reported to the legislature that they were aiming for implementation sometime in the spring this year. Which brings me to the following. Let's read paragraph number three here. It says, the employer shall not express preference between competing organizations where two or more employee organizations are seeking to represent its employees. Well, while LNI hasn't publicly said that they prefer Wolfsey Local 1671, uh, there's still a problem here. 
Do you know what will happen if the scheduling system goes live before we have an election? Well, if that happens, hundreds of interpreters that support WOOFSI, that are DSHS interpreters, not part of the bargaining unit of LNI interpreters, they will become eligible to sign a card and to vote in the upcoming election. This will definitely give WOOFSI a huge boost in the upcoming election, and LNI is assisting WOOFSI on this whether they want to admit it or not, just by implementing the scheduling system. This is also breaking the law, as you just read with me. So what is Washington Interpreters doing about this? Well, I want you to now go and grab some ice cream and then come back. First off, this is how we will delay this implementation. We just filed an unfair labor practice complaint with PERC against LNI, as you can see here, and that was filed on Monday, March 29th. This is the email that we sent to PERC with the complaint and pertinent attachments. We stated the following to PERC. Quote, Washington Interpreters intends to file a motion for temporary relief with the executive director as soon as possible. Now, this is done to expedite the process before the implementation date, which is going to be in about two weeks. As you can see here, we also submitted our legal arguments explaining all of the concerns shared in this video and more. But because of time, I'll just read to you some of the things that we want PERC to do. First, we want PERC to acknowledge LNI is violating the law by implementing the scheduling system, to require LNI to inform interpreters that they committed the unfair labor practice, and most importantly, to direct LNI to postpone implementation of the scheduling system until our petition is either dismissed or until a union is certified to represent LNI providers. This would be after the election, of course, and we do have the numbers by the way it's only a matter of time and lastly we are asking PERC to exclude from the list of eligibility any interpreter that takes an LNI appointment for the first time after April 12th in case the scheduling system goes live before our legal process to delay this would prevent Wolfsey from getting an advantage here, you can see that we already contacted Governor Inslee and requested a meeting through his office. We also asked the governor to intervene to delay the implementation. We have also contacted Joe Sachs, LNI director, and requested a meeting with him as well to address this issue. So, here's what we want you to do. Please contact Governor Inslee directly. We need all of you to take five minutes and send him a message by filling out this form that you see here individually. No online petitions this time. I want you to one by one, individually, do this. The governor needs to hear from all of us now. Scroll down to type your message and ask him to delay the implementation until after we have a certified union so that we can bargain for better working conditions instead of LNI and others deciding for us. This is our right. You can use this template right here. For your convenience, you can find all of these links and instructions to sign our card below in the description box of this video. In closing, I want to encourage you to not lose hope. This is not over yet, but we need to be proactive and contact the governor, your local representatives, and make noise. Help this channel by liking this video and remember to subscribe to keep on getting relevant information for our interpreting community. See you in the next video and as always, God bless.